Welcome to Mercer Health News. My guest today is Dr. David Michaels, and our topic is the impact of extreme climate on employers' most important asset, their people. Dr. Michaels, thank you so much for being here today. Well, Tracy, if I may, thank you so much for inviting me. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, the New York Times has called you a champion for worker safety, and you're the longest serving leader of OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, in their entire history. And now you're an epidemiologist and professor at George Washington University. And today we're talking about an issue near and dear to my heart, which is the National Commission on Climate and Workforce Health. And the commission was created by the Health Action Alliance in partnership with us, Mercer, with uh, strategic input from the CDC Foundation. And we're pleased that you're an advisor to HAA and the commission, as well as serving as one of our commissioners. And um, I also just want to thank you. You wrote the introduction for our first piece of research, which is titled The Increasingly Risks to Our People-Powered Economy. So I really just want to start by thank you and giving everybody the background on the work that you're doing with us. Well, well thanks. You know, I worked with the Health Action Alliance around COVID-19. I thought the work they did was so important. Uh, so I was very excited and pleased when uh, I was asked by the folks at HAA to join this commission and work on issues around the climate crisis and protecting the workforce. Well, I can hardly wait for you to um, give some advice to our audience. We, Our audience is largely made up of employers. And so specifically, you're talking to leaders from just about every company across America who are responsible for the strategy and the delivery of employee benefits. And of course, that includes healthcare benefits, but also prescription drugs, dental vision, disability, you know, life insurance, 401k, voluntary benefits, just like the whole landscape of benefits. And so as we focus in on the impact of extreme climate, this is something that really has evolved over a long period of time. And there's a piece of reporting for the government that I really like to refer to to kind of illustrate the fact that we are seeing a change. And these are inflation adjusted numbers, but basically in the 80s, they've recorded $1 billion disaster every four months. And then when you fast forward to today, between 2018 and 2022, it's $1 billion disaster every three weeks. And so definitely we're seeing a change. Um, and just, you know, the first question for you is what do you think the biggest extreme climate threat is that employers need to plan for? There are a bunch of concerns, a bunch of hazards related to the climate change, but clearly extreme heat is the one most worrisome. It impacts so many people for so long in so many places. And it's a whole range of different occupational groups. We think first, of course, of the people who are outdoors doing strenuous work all the time, uh, construction workers, farm workers, workers on the tarmacs in airports. There are lots of these workers, and they're at great risk. But also, other workers who you might not think about the same way, um, workers who drive unair-conditioned vehicles and have to go in the back or do things in the hot weather uh, in that they're physically stressed. The workers who, who deliver things who are in and out of buildings. And in fact, there are plenty of workers in hot indoor situations, old factories, especially ones where they have processes involving heat or these giant warehouses that were built without thinking about the need for air conditioning because perhaps 10 or 20 years ago, we didn't have that need. And of course, we see this problem across the entire com country. Here in Arizona, Florida, in hot states, there has certainly been more of awareness of this. In some ways, people are better prepared. But the warehouses, other facilities, uh, and outdoor work in the most northern of our continental United States can be very hot and very humid uh, during heat waves. And workers in those places are not acclimatized. And plenty of these workers already have chronic health conditions that are exacerbated by extreme heat. And they're really at risk for severe illness, for heart attacks, and for death. Uh, so it's, it's going to be very important to take on this issue because we will see extreme heat longer in more places every year. And of course, 
unfortunately, it's not just extreme heat we're worried about. Wildfire smoke has become an issue that those of us on the East Coast are now aware of in ways we were never aware of previously, or as aware of it as people, say, in California or the Northwest have experienced. There, there were days last summer when New York City and Washington had the worst air pollution in the world. That affects everybody, including, of course, workers who are working outside or even inside if there's a, a poor HVAC system where, where the air isn't clean when it comes into the workplace. And so we have to prepare for that. And, it, and there are others as well, the um, extreme weather, tornadoes, flooding, all have big effects on workers. And workers have been killed in all these situations. And then less obviously, but things that we really have to worry about are the changing range of insects, mm -hmm. uh, ticks that cause Lyme disease, mosquitoes that sp spread malaria are moving into areas that they were not previously in the United States. And we've seen the first cases of malaria that are transmitted locally, that not from people coming from malaria-infested co countries, but getting it here in the United States from others with malaria. And we see that more and more, especially among workers who are working outside all the time. So we have a lot to prepare for. Yeah, you know, the commission is really coming together to help employers not only recognize these health risks, but to also help them figure out how to take the necessary steps to build climate resilient workforces. And so, you know, based on your experience and work in this area, is there a call to action for employers across America? And if so, what is it? Well, the primary call to action now is to prepare for extreme weather events. Of course, some of those events are not just one day, but they're long-term uh, long events, things that could be days or even weeks. We know what the science tells us. We know the risks that workers face, older workers, workers with pre-existing conditions. Uh, we need our workforce to be healthy. Companies can't operate without healthy workers and certainly don't want work to be making people sick or sicker or even killing them. So the call to action now is to prepare for extreme heat, in some cases to prepare for welfare smoke. Do that now because it's coming. Yeah, you know, um, historically, um, you know, the benefits leaders and risk managers didn't necessarily work together um, collaboratively, and the pandemic was definitely a catalyst for that to happen. Um, we have some really great news from our most recent U.S. people risk study, where 97% of organizations reported that their HR and risk management professionals are already working together to mitigate people risk. And certainly everything that you're talking about would require that. And I think our mantra since the pandemic has been, don't break up the band. There's so much good work that can be done um, when everybody works together. And so what is your best advice to our audience as it relates to planning for the impact of extreme climate on worker health? You know, Tracy, it's funny you mentioned that. It's really at the top of the pandemic when it was worse. I heard from safety experts and businesses all around the country that they had never had the same level of access to, to the C-suite where leaders of every corporation recognized that uh, keeping their workers safe had to be a very, very high priority. And I hope that continues now into the, this new set of concerns around uh, the climate crisis. What we're trying to do with the commission is pull together the science, pull together the, the examples of companies that are doing it right, and share that information. Make sure that uh, people who work for different sorts of businesses can learn from each other, can do the, the preparation. And what I advise right now is going out and looking at your workers and the risks that different groups of workers face and working with them. Sit down with, if you have construction workers, if you have outdoor workers, whatever it is, your workers have an understanding of what they're exposed to, what they might be facing. Work with them, say, okay, let's figure out what the risks are and how we're going to mitigate those risks. How are we going to prepare now? Because when that extreme weather comes, we better be ready. We can't just decide at the last minute, okay, what are we going to do now? So that's what I hope employers will do. And that's what I hope the commission will help them do. Because together, I think we can keep workers safe, even in these extreme conditions. So the the last word is we have to all be prepared. Um, 
which is great advice and just really appreciate you being here today. And to our audience, if you're interested in a free copy of the commission's new report on the risks that extreme weather pose to employee health and the implications for business performance, you can check out our website. It, you can find that at climatehealthcommission.org. So Dr. Michael, thank you so much again for being here today. Really appreciate your insights. Um, this is only the beginning of our work together on this topic. And so uh, more great things to come in the future. Well, thank you. I look forward to this. I think together we can do a lot of good. Thank you.